1981, Sandra Day O'Connor becomes the first woman justice on the Supreme Court. 1969, man takes the first steps on the moon. 1964, Congress passes the Civil Rights Act. These are just a few of the many significant historical events that have affected and helped shape our nation. History does matter, but for some children, learning history is an insurmountable task, which they consider to be, let's face it, quite boring. But it doesn't have to be that way. We learn more about this this morning from our guests. Let's meet Laureen Hungo Brady and Kevin T. Brady, PhD, both of the American Institute for History Education. And rejoining us this morning is our old friend Donald T. Knizik, PhD, and former CEO of the International Society for Technology in Education. Welcome to all of you. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you all again. You're talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is history. Loved it when I was in school. But I think as a young student, you know, you may have thought to yourself, you know, who really cares about history? History is what? History. It's in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, the, the children today, they, they do focus on what's going on them at this moment. Mm -hmm. They feel that that's what impacts them directly. But in truth, history does matter. And our history is important for them to know for the success of their school days, but ultimately for the success of our society moving into the future. I think that's such a great point. And I think that, you know, history is a part of uh, nearly every national educational curriculum. We know this, and I know the Common Core standards are important in all of this. But why is this important in your opinion, Dr. Brady? Well, currently, 49 of the 50 states have a core content curriculum standard for social studies. But in addition, 46 states have signed up for the National Common Core Standards for English Language Arts, mm -hmm. which has a big history component now, where students have to read historical text, informational text, um, and, and primary sources. You know, I think we can all agree, right, that history is important and relevant, but how can we get young people focused on history that happened before and not the iPad that's telling you all the latest stuff that's sure, happening today. Sure. Well, our teaching resources and what we use in, within the classroom with, with our young students needs to be creative. It needs to be innovative, but most importantly, rich in academic content. And we have to engage them in that digital world where they have all of that experience where they're growing up right now. Cicero once said, to know nothing before you were born is to remain forever a child. And when I tell that to students, they just tell me, well, history class is boring. And I say, how is history boring? It's, it's the greatest events of man's time on earth. And I think what we have to do is we have to meet students where they're at. And today's students, they live in their cell phones or as you said, on their iPads, and they're looking at it constantly. And we have to be there with them to participate in their lives and bring these great stories and these, these phenomenal events to life for them. I think this hits a nail on the head because meeting them where they are means bringing technology into the fold, right Don? Right, well we, we obviously see students really motivated by being able to use the devices they use outside of school to communicate, to interact with their friends, to, to access information. Being able to use that in an academic pursuit such as history is really exciting and important to them. And not only, not only does that engage them in a different way, but it allows them to extend an area that they find interesting with all the digital resources available, they can pursue that in a way that's impossible to do if you don't have the digital resources and connectivity in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Agreed, and so how then do we kind of meet kids where they are? We've developed a lot of software and partnered with a lot of hardware companies to bring cost-effective solutions to the classroom. Um, and our yeah, flagship or our signature product is Cicero History Beyond very the Textbook. Good, it good. meets all the standards, the Common Core standards, all the state standards. And then what we did is we took a look and we said we also have to really meet the young learners where they're at. So we developed a, 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 a software product for them called Cicero Kids in which the students can go through a museum and really discover a lot of historical events, I mean at the teacher's pace and the standards pace, but also give them the opportunity to delve deeper into history to really go where they places where they find it to be very exciting. Cicero Kids is a wonderful, warm, engaging environment for students K through five. It teaches them all about American history, social studies. We have infused the fundamental literacy skills that they need and STEM as well. So they understand that science, technology, and math is a part of history and that's what helped to develop our great nation as well. So where was this when I was a kid? It was only three years <laughs> ago that I was a K through fifth grader. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> All right, terrific information, guys. Thanks so much for coming by and sharing. Good to see you, us. too, Don. Okay, great to meet you. Take care. Take care. All right, to find out more about engaging your child with a love of history, visit the website for the American Institute for History Education, CiceroSystems.com.